Minecraft 1.21 is coming soon. There's a new weapon, new structures, new mobs, new dogs, new bogs. Okay, let's go. My world spawn was in a forest on top of a tree. Punched the tree to get down and also to get some wood. And then I used the wood and made a crafting table and a wooden pickaxe. I mined some stone and I made some stone tools. I was looking for a village and was gathering sugarcane on the way. Also, I'm sorry cows. I went to the top of a mountain so I could get a better view. I didn't see any signs of a village and so I made a furnace so I could cook some food. I also made a bed and then I just slept under the stars that night. The next day I found one of the new Minecraft dogs. But I didn't have any bones to tame him yet. I found a jungle island so I stopped to get some bamboo. It was getting nighttime after that, so I spent the night on the island. On day two, I found a bamboo forest, so I stopped to gather some. I got to a desert, and it's usually pretty easy to spot villages in the desert, so I went on land. Climbed to the top of a mountain, and turned my render distance up. At first I didn't see anything, but then I saw off in the distance the signs of a village. I headed in that direction, and as the day was ending, I finally made it there. I grabbed some bread from a chest and some more bread and some emeralds from another chest. Then I set up my bed on a rooftop and I went to sleep for the night. On day three I planted some bamboo and then I planted some sugar cane. I needed some torches for mining so I cooked some logs to make charcoal. I needed to do some mining so I started digging down. I found some iron as I was making my staircase. I was mining a tunnel at Y level 15 and I found a lush cave. I cooked my iron so I could make a shield, and I also made a sword and some armor, and then I mined into the cave. I was kind of scared because I'm pretty low powered still, but there's a lot of iron in there. So I mined some of the iron, and then I got jumped by a skeleton. He had an enchanted bow. Luckily I had my shield and I just ran away. I made some iron leggings, and then I went back to deal with the skeleton. He didn't drop his bow though, unfortunately. So I just kept mining iron and fighting mobs. I explored the mine shaft a little. There was a lot of iron in there, so I made the rest of the pieces for a full set of iron armor, and I also made an iron pickaxe and a bucket. I wanted to find an axolotl before I left the caves. On day 5 I was still searching for an axolotl. They're usually everywhere in these caves, and I was surprised I hadn't found one yet. Then I saw some tough bricks, and I knew that meant I'd found a trial chamber. It's still early game, and I'm pretty unprepared, but I thought I might as well go inside and see what I can find. I got some food cooking because I was really going to need it, and then I started digging down to see what part of the chamber I was in. Unfortunately, I was a little too high up, so I needed to make a new entrance. I got inside and I was greeted by the bog. It's a new mob that shoots poison arrows. I dug through the walls to find a safer area and I found a spot behind a closed door that would work. The first chamber had some dispensers so I decided to empty them just to be safe. There was a water bucket and some fire charges. And then a bog dropped down so I dealt with him. In the next dispenser I got a splash potion of weakness. It used to be really hard to get splash potions of weakness early game. So this will really help in a single biome survival challenge. There were some more bogs, so I had to deal with them. Luckily, the way this chamber is set up, they're trapped above you for the most part, and you can just get them to attack each other. I got a bow off one of the bogs, which makes this chamber much easier because you can just snipe them from below. I got rid of all the bogs on that level, and I got a trial key as my reward. On my first attempt at this video, I'd opened over 40 vaults, and I hadn't got a heavy core. So I was incredibly lucky this time by getting it on my first try, but maybe the RNG just owed me a little bit. Although since recording they've changed the way you get the heavy core and you'd need a different kind of trial chamber. We might explore that a little more in my next video. I still had to fight a breeze so I could get a breeze rod. After that I left the chamber and I made the new mace. As a base weapon it's not that good and it's pretty slow, but you can use it to inflict drop damage. I'll explore that a little more later, but it looks really cool I think, doesn't it? I was still unable to add enchants to it at this point in the video, but that gets added later. On day 6 I wanted to mine some tough bricks before I left, and I found a few diamonds. So I made a diamond pickaxe. I wanted to find an axolotl before I went to the surface still, and I got pretty lost and I was just wandering around aimlessly, but then I found a pool with a cute little axolotl swimming around. I caught him with a bucket of water and I decided to name him Jeffrey. There was another one swimming around so I caught it also. I'm sure they're friends and I don't want to just leave it here all by itself. I decided to just dig my way to the surface and I got up there just at the dawn of day 7. On day 7 I had forgot to record so all I have is this clip of the morning but all I did was explore the area all day. 
On day eight, me and Jeffrey went to the nearby Badlands because I wanted to mine some gold so that I could make some golden apples and then I could cure some zombie villagers. The Badlands are really good for gold because it will generate at a much higher Y level than anywhere else so you can just find gold just out in the open. I also found some minecart chests. There wasn't really anything too good in them but I did get a golden apple. I found one of the new Minecraft armadillos. They're pretty cute and it's funny when they get scared and turn into a little ball but maybe it's not that funny for them. I found a ruined portal so I decided to grab the gold block. I got some golden carrots and a clock from the chest, and then it was starting to get dark and I didn't have a bed with me, so I just mined in a cave all night. On day 9 I mined up all the obsidian from the ruined portal. This takes a really long time with an unenchanted pickaxe. I got home and I got all the gold smelting, and then I chopped some bamboo from my bamboo fields. On day 10 I fought a husk with the mace but I still don't really have the hang of the mace yet. That night I started building a little starter house. I don't plan on staying in the desert forever, but I need a little base to myself for now. I went to the wood of Badlands on day 11 to chop some oak trees because they can drop apples, and I need some apples so I can make golden apples for the zombie villagers. By the night I had enough apples and I replanted some of the saplings. And then the next day I made some golden apples and then I built a little building to do the zombification and de-zombification in. On day 13 I brought 5 villagers to the building, and that night I got a zombie to follow me and I tricked him with a trap door. He attacked all the villagers and turned them all into zombies. Then I got rid of the regular zombie, splashed the villagers with a splash potion of weakness, I gave them all golden apples. One of them has a shovel now, I'm not really sure where he got that from. And then I waited for them to de-zombify. As long as I stayed in there, they'd stay focused on me and they wouldn't turn the others back into zombies. But if I left for a second, they'd all turn into zombies. But finally I got all five de-zombified. I harvested some sugarcane because I wanted to level up a cartographer. And I can sell him glass now, which is really easy to get since I'm in a desert after all. Unfortunately he didn't have a trial chambers map. I think it's a 50-50 chance if they'll have one or not. I made a blast furnace because I wanted to make one of my zombie villagers into an armorer. And then once I level him up, I'll be able to get diamond armor from him really cheap. But I was going to need a lot of emeralds, so I gathered some sand. On day 15, I sold some glass to my cartographer. And then I worked on leveling up my armorer. I got him up to expert, and he had diamond boots and leggings. I sold some more glass so I could buy the boots and the leggings. And then I sold even more glass to get more emeralds to level my armorer fully up. I got him up to master level and he had a diamond chest plate and helmets for one emerald. I needed more iron so I spent the next day in the caves. I ended up with a little over a stack of iron on the night of day 16. On day 17 I sold some iron to my armorer and then I started leveling up a toolsmith. Both of them will buy iron from me for one emerald per iron and that's a really good deal. I sold some more glass to my cartographer and then I got my toolsmith fully leveled up. Day 18 I made a new cartographer and I started leveling him up and then I leveled up a zombie villager as a farmer. And then I leveled up the cartographer and this one did offer me a trial chambers map once I, he got up to journeyman. And then I got my farmer fully leveled up. Day 19 I bought some golden carrots from my farmer and then I bought a trial chambers map from my new cartographer. It showed that the chamber was northwest and pretty close, so me and Jeffrey went off in search of it. Once I got there I just dug down and eventually I got to it, but it was in a cave and it was a bit dangerous to get over there. But I made my way over and then I mined into the trial chambers. In the first room I was greeted by a bunch of baby zombies, and I mean a lot. I wish I brought a lava bucket, it really would have helped, but I used a pillar and a sword and I got them all cleared away. I got two trial keys and an ender pearl as the rewards. The first vault, I got an emerald block and some poison arrows. And the second one, I got some iron and more arrows. The hallway had bogs and more baby zombies. I got to a room with some beds in it. I guess this is supposed to be your safe room. There were some diamonds in the chest, and then I got to one of those layered trapdoor rooms. They're pretty easy to clear though. I got a trial key, and then I cleared out the rest of the room. In the first vault, I got an enchanted golden apple. Honey, emeralds, wind charges, and a junk enchanted book. The next one I got more wind charges, emeralds, and poison arrows. 
There's a hidden room under the tree room, and in that room I found a diamond axe and another god apple. There was a slime spawner in this trial chambers. I found another trapdoor room, and I got a honey bottle and a shield from the first vault. From the next vault I got more honey and a diamond chest plate with protection 1 on it. I got some more keys and cleared out the rest of the bogs from the top levels. I got another god apple, some iron, and an emerald block in one of the top vaults. Then I got another heavy core in the other vault. In my first try I didn't find a heavy core after 40 vaults, so the RNG is really favoring me. I decided to take all the copper trap doors from the room, and also the copper lamps, because I wanted to use these for building. I was getting ready to leave and was fighting a baby zombie, and then I got swarmed by baby zombies. I panicked a little bit. Bruh. It was a close call, but luckily I was able to outsmart a bunch of baby zombies, so I went ahead and left the chambers. It was night when I got back home. I got some really good loot from the chambers. I also got some really good building material. I've been wanting to build with this new copper stuff, but most of it is pretty resource intensive. On day 24 I wanted to get a level worker leveled up because they'll sell you a saddle once you get them to master level. But for some reason he kept changing his prices and the trades were not leveling them up very well. He wanted me to get him rabbit hides, and I felt kind of bad about it, but I spent the whole rest of the day hunting rabbits. Sorry rabbits. Sold the leather worker 8 rabbit hides, but that barely changed his level. It took way too long to get them. Maybe if I'd had looting, it would have been quicker, or if I'd just been smart and used a bow. I decided to go mine some gravel because I can get flint from that, and he'll buy flint. So I spent the night mining gravel. On day 26 I made a Fletcher so that I can trade gravel for flint. With that, I was easily able to finish leveling up my leather worker. I should have done that in the first place. Now I was finally able to buy saddles, and with a saddle I can finally ride this camel. Look at his ears. Camels are not the fastest ride, but they keep you safe from a lot of mobs, and they're really cute. I rode to a nearby village and greeted all the villagers there, and then I kept exploring. I found some more armadillos. Hopefully I can have some as pets later in the game once I get settled down. On day 27, me and Jeffrey and Camel were exploring. We found a new wooded badlands, and then we found some of the new Minecraft striped dogs. I had a lot of bones with me, so I tamed them all. Hopefully they'll get along with Jeffrey. Then I decided to go home so I could get the dogs home safe. I had a lot of fun traveling with my new dogs, but I had to sleep under the stars again. Day 28, we made it home safe. I brought all my dogs inside and I got them to sit. This was still just a temporary house, but now that I have dogs to take care of, I needed a roof. I spent the entire day 29 just building the roof, but now at least my dogs have a roof over their heads. On day 30, I had to finish the upper walls of my house. I really like these tough bricks. They have a nice variety of, like, different cuts. Day 31, I got a nice morning surprise when I went outside. I really need to get out of the desert. Don't worry, my dogs were okay. I wanted to get a shepherd so I could buy beds for my zombie villagers. Honestly, they don't need beds, but I'd feel better about it if they had some. I didn't have enough emeralds to get him fully leveled up before he went to sleep, but my zombie villagers aren't able to sleep yet, and I wanted to get a mending book and a bookshelf trade from one of them. So I spent the night resetting his job block until he offered me mending and bookshelves as a trade. His mending book is kind of expensive for a zombie villager, but I'll take it. The bookshelves are what I mainly need right now so I can make an enchantment table. On day 32 I bought some bookshelves from my librarian, then I made an enchantment table, and I did some more trades for emeralds, and I bought enough bookshelves for a full enchantment table. Then I got my shepherd fully leveled up so I can buy beds from him for two emeralds each. I set up my enchantment table and then I made a diamond sword. I checked to see which enchantments offered were the best, and I put protection 4 on my boots. I got efficiency 4 on my axe, infinity. Power 3 and unbreaking on my bow. I got efficiency 4 on my pickaxe, but I grindstone that. Sharpness 4 on my sword and protection 4 on my leggings. On day 33 I needed some more lapis, but I found some diamonds before I found any lapis. And then I found a big opening into a lower part of the caves. found a lot of diamonds down there, but still no lapis. And I finally gave up, but on my way out I saw right beside my staircase there was some lapis. Bruh. And just a little bit further away. In some tough, there was some more lapis. I enchanted a diamond shovel and it got efficiency 4 and unbreaking. 
makes gathering sand so much easier. So that's what I did all day, gathered sand. I made some extra furnaces so I could smelt four stacks of sand at once. The phantoms were after me, so I fought some that night so I could get a membrane for a slow falling potion. On day 35, I sold some more glass to my cartographers. Then I used the levels to enchant a book. Got Unbreaking 3 and Protection 3 on it. Then I sold some more glass. Then I got Fortune 3 and Unbreaking 3 on my pickaxe. It's too bad I grindstone that one with Deficiency 4 on it. I leveled up my librarian and they have an Unbreaking 1 book now. It's not the best, but I can combine it with multiple to make Unbreaking 3. And then when I leveled him up again, he had a Looting 3 book. I needed some iron, so I headed down to the caves to mine all night. With Fortune 3 on my pickaxe, it makes it much easier to get a lot of iron. Day 36 was more selling glass. Then I got my iron smelting, and I enchanted my chest plate, and I got Protection 3 on it. Bought a bunch of paintings from my shepherd, mainly for the levels, but I can use the paintings too. And then I enchanted a new pickaxe, and it got Efficiency 4. Day 37, it was more selling glass. Then I expanded my zombie villager's house a little. So now the roof was high enough and I could finally give them beds. They seemed pretty happy. I'm sure they were exhausted from not sleeping for so long. I tried to enchant my helmet, but all I got was Unbreaking 3. I grindstoned it, but once again I should have saved it since I can buy new ones for only one emerald. I attempted to enchant the mace, but it's still not possible in the game. Then I sold some more glass and enchanted a new sword and got Sharpness 4 Unbreaking and Looting 3 on it. I decided to start leveling up a cleric. And that night I enchanted my helmet again and I got Respiration 3 and Protection 4, but no Unbreaking. I should have kept that last one and I could have just combined the two. So now I almost have Protection 4 on all my gear, but still need Unbreaking and Mending. I combined my two swords, so now it has Sharpness 5. And I combined my pickaxe to make it Efficiency with Fortune and Unbreaking. Then combined Unbreaking books and added Unbreaking to my leggings. Spent some time fighting mobs for EXP and then put the Unbreaking 3 and Protection 3 book onto my chest plate that already had Protection 3 on it. I got my Cleric leveled up and he has Ender Pearls, so that's lucky for both him and me. I bought as many as I could because he's not safe like my zombie villagers and he could just disappear at any time. And then I put Unbreaking 3 on my helmet. Did some more villager trades and then I got Unbreaking on my boots. Then I was combining more Unbreaking 1 books and my anvil broke. So I had to go down to the caves to get some more iron. Caught a couple tropical fish because that's Jeffrey's favorite food. Spent the rest of the night just mining iron. I have Fortune 3 so I was able to get a whole lot. I got back from the caves around midday on day 41. I had a little over one and a half stacks of iron. Sold some more glass and then I made a new anvil. I put mending on my chest plate and leggings and then spent the night fighting mobs for EXP. An invisible spider attacked me, they're kinda rare. I put mending on my boots and helmet, and then I made some more obsidian. It's much easier to mine with efficiency 4. I found some more axolotls that night in the caves. Now Jeffrey can have some more friends when we finally settle down. On day 43, I finally made a nether portal. My spawn was in a soul sand valley. It could have been much worse, but it's still not the greatest. I needed to find some piglins so I could trade them gold for fire resistance potions but they don't spawn in the soul sand, so I had to do some exploring. I thought about going into the basalt deltas, but after seeing all the magma cubes, I had second thoughts. Nope. I found a fortress before I even found a piglin, but I would have to come back to it. I finally found a nether waste with some piglins. It was pretty close to the fortress. I got one of them in a hole, and I started giving him all my gold. But after all the trades, he hadn't even given me one fire resistance potion. I considered trying to mine some nether gold, but then I just chose to go back to the fortress without fire resistance. I bridged up and over to the fortress. I got the advancement for a terrible fortress. I needed to find a blaze spawner. I set up some barricades so I could easily deal with wither skeletons. Then I grabbed a bunch of nether wart. I found a blaze in the hall. A little later I found the spawner. I dealt with the wither skeleton and then I started fighting blazes. My armor held up pretty good and I stayed until I got to 25 blaze rods. That's more than enough for some potions and for making eyes of ender. I ate some food and made sure Jeffrey was okay, then headed back to my portal. When I got home that night I started brewing some slow falling potions and I added redstone to extend their duration. I made some eyes of ender and then on day 45 I went off in search of the stronghold. 
My first eye broke, but that's okay, I got a few more. Now I knew the direction to go. I used the boat for some travel, and that made things go quicker. The eyes brought me to a village, and right near it is where I started digging down. I found the stronghold after a bit of digging. There was a library close, but it didn't have any good enchanted books. I got lost in the stronghold and it took me the entire day until I found the portal room. I got rid of the silverfish and the spawner. There were already two eyes in the portal so I only needed ten. I made a chest to store my junk in and then I added the eyes to the portal. I accidentally threw one, oops. I jumped into the portal so I could begin the dragon fight. Then I quickly destroyed all the end crystals, shooting most with my bow but I had to pillar up to the caged ones. Got sent flying by the dragon a couple times, but luckily I have slow falling potions, so that doesn't affect me that much. Finally I got all the crystals taken out and the dragon started perching. I wanted to finish the dragon off with the mace, so I could be one of the first people to kill the dragon with the mace. Obviously not the first, but maybe one of the first. And I finally accomplished that. I watched the sky light up as I got the advancement for free the end. I stood there for a minute, then I collected all the EXP that she dropped. Then I pillared up and made a bridge to the new portal so I could go find an end city. I didn't see anything straight away when I got there, so I turned my render distance all the way up. And then even at first I didn't see anything, but then off in the distance I saw an end city. I couldn't tell at first if it had a ship, but when I got closer I saw the ship. It was a really long way away though, and it was across the void. I was going to have to bridge all the way over there. So I had to gather a lot of blocks to make a bridge, but I still ran out of blocks before I got to the new island, so I had to go back and mine some more. With some more stacks of blocks though, I had more than enough to finish the bridge. I ran over to the city and I started fighting shulkers. The main reason I was here was for an elytra, but I also need shulker shells so I can make shulker boxes. The big tower room can be pretty dangerous if you don't have proper armor. I was getting some decent loot from the chests and gathering shulker shells. I got knocked pretty high in the air so I drank a slow falling potion and I decided to try to float to the end ship. I started to fall but I threw an ender pearl just in time and I landed on the ship. I ran aside and I dealt with the shulker. I got a bunch of diamonds from the chest and a pretty good chest plate. I made a shulker box so I could store all my junk. There was some okay stuff in the second chest but what I was here for was the elytra. Finally I got it. I grabbed the dragon's head off the front of the ship. Luckily I'd remembered to bring fireworks, so I put on my elytra and I flew away. I wanted to try to find another city before I went home, and having elytra makes it pretty easy to find cities. I went straight for the ship and grabbed the loot, and then I grabbed a spare elytra. I also grabbed a second dragon head, and then I went back to the portal. I grabbed the dragon's egg using the trick with a torch, and then I jumped into the portal and I got the final credits. To change the background of the credits for 1.21, it used to be a dirt block but it's still the same message. I collected all the books from one of the library rooms in the stronghold. This one had a couple good enchanted books in it. There was a regular zombie spawner right in the middle of the stronghold. I thought that was kind of weird. I got a name tag and a music disc from the chest, and then I tumbled my way to the surface and I was directly in the middle of that village. It was pretty easy getting home with my new wings. I wanted to put on breaking and mending on my elytra as the first thing. And then I used some more of my levels to combine some of my equipment on the anvil. Now my pickaxe had efficiency 5 in mending. And same on my wood axe, but I still needed unbreaking for the wood axe. Then I added mending to my sword. I woke my villager up to buy some unbreaking books from him. And I saw he'll buy books from me for one emerald per book. And I have a ton of them from the stronghold, so I can get a lot of emeralds from that. I got mending on my shovel and combined all the unbreaking books. On day 51 I went exploring with my elytra. There was a close by jungle and there were some pandas. I gave all the pandas some bamboo and they made a baby panda. I wish I could get some pandas at my base, but they're really hard to travel with. I found a desert temple so I went to check it out. I got rid of the pressure plate trap and I got a power 4 book from one chest and another had two golden apples in it. I also got some dune armor trim and some emeralds. I gathered up all the TNT before I left. I was flying around until after it got dark and I found a nice flat area that would be pretty good to set my base up at. 
I wanted to find a new trial chamber, so I gathered up some supplies and I flew to that savannah village. I leveled up the cartographer and he had a trial map, but I forgot to bring redstone or a compass. Luckily there was a cleric and I bought some redstone from him. Then I bought a new trial chamber's map. The trial chamber was to the east and it was pretty close. This one had poison spiders and zombies in the first room. And that's much better than baby zombies and bogs. I really should remember to bring a lava bucket to these things. I got to another one of those trap door rooms with different levels, but this one had strays instead of bogs and that's much easier. Also, having a good bow with infinity makes it easier than my last attempt. I wasn't getting anything notable in the vaults. Well, nothing that's notable at this point of gameplay. The strays really were fighting each other more than me. I cleared the whole room and then I took all the trap doors. I got a flow armor trim from the chest in the hidden room. There was another trap door room with strays, except for this one had a little bit different of an entrance on the other side. I cleared the room and I got a bolt armor trim from the vault, but the rest of the vaults were just junk. I took these trap doors and then I cleared some more vaults, but I didn't get anything good. Except a golden apple, I guess. I found another trap door room and I cleared it out. There wasn't anything good in these vaults, but the generation was neat because it was kind of below the bedrock. I was running out of inventory room and luckily I brought a shulker box. I cleared the room with the breeze spawner and that was the last room, so I cleared the whole structure and I'd looted each vault. I left the chambers on day 55. I was flying over the area that I wanted to move to and I saw a pink sheep. And naturally occurring pink sheep are extremely rare in Minecraft, so I took that as a sign that I should definitely move there. I put pink sheep into a boat so that it would be safe. I really wish I hadn't done that. And then I made a pillar marker so I could find the spot again. On day 56 I went down to the caves to mine some tough. I was going to need a lot of it for my new house. Then I packed all the essential things into shulker boxes and I flew back to my new base. I said hello to pink sheep, planted some bamboo and then I started clearing land. I was going to need to clear a lot of land for my new base. So on day 57 that's what I did. I cleared land all day until my shovel's durability wore out. I went back to the desert that night. I needed to mend my shovel and my elytra. So I did some villager trades and then I fought mobs all night. I got a skeleton to kill a creeper and I got a music disc from it. On day 58 I gathered a lot of sand and then as I was flying to my new base a thunderstorm started. So I went to a nearby village and I went to sleep. On day 59 I started building a house for Jeffrey and my other axolotls. I saw some pillagers staring at me so I went over and I fought them. I accidentally gave myself voluntary exile. I wasn't really prepared for a raid and I had nowhere to set up for one at, so I decided to find a village that was kind of far away. I felt bad for the villagers because I was unable to keep most of them safe, but a few of them I was able to safeguard inside their houses. Honestly, I haven't done many raids, so I was not sure what to do or expect. The first wave was pretty easy and I saved a few more villagers. The next wave was a little more difficult. It got nighttime, so I slept so that no other mobs would spawn. Day 60 the new wave started and this one had ravagers. Then it was a pretty simple wave except for the last pillager he got stuck in a cave so it took a little while to find him. The next wave had evokers so I was able to get a totem of undying finally. And then things started to get a little more difficult and most of the loose villagers they didn't make it. There was still another wave coming and it was night again so I decided to go to sleep. I finished off that wave on day 61 and then another wave came. I had some pretty close calls but it wasn't anything I couldn't handle. I really hate vexes though, they're so hard to fight. But I killed the last mob of that wave and the raid was over. I got the hero of the village advancement and I got a few totems now. I let the remaining villagers out of their houses. Uh, sorry about your friends guys. Five or six of them survived the raid, hopefully they'll be able to repopulate the village. I flew back to my desert village that night. On day 62 I continued building Jeffrey's house. I wanted to make it like a mini lush cave environment so I bone mealed moss in the area. Then I made a nice little pool in the middle so that they could swim around. On day 63 I set Jeffrey's name on the anvil and then set him free in his new pond. I'm gonna miss having the little guy in my inventory. I released another one into the pool and I gave them some tropical fish and they made a little baby axolotl. Then I released the rest into the pond and I watched them swim around. On day 64 I ran into a wandering trader. I bought some spruce tree saplings, vines, and some gunpowder from him. 
I set the vines on Jeffrey's house. He likes stuff like that. I spent the next couple of days building my house. Unfortunately, in snapshot worlds, you can't use replay mods, so I'm not able to make a cool time lapse. On the night of day 66, I sheared pink sheep because I needed some wool, but she only gave me one piece. On day 67, I did some villager trading to repair my pickaxe. Then I went down to the caves because I needed some more tough. I really like how my house looks from above. On day 68, I put some glowberries in Jeffrey's house. I think that fits a little better than the lanterns. Then I spent the rest of the day working on my house. It was tall enough for two stories, so I built a floor for the second level. Day 69 was not nice. It was raining and gross out. I spent the entire day just clearing and leveling land. And then on day 70, I spent the entire day building a pen for pink sheep. I wanted it to be nicer than just a simple square fence because pink sheep deserves the best. On day 71, I accidentally killed pink sheep. I was trying to get them out of the boat, and instead of hitting the boat, I accidentally hit pink sheep. Since they were sheared, I thought maybe I'd only killed the white sheep, but deep down I knew that was not the case. This is the worst possible outcome. I almost quit Minecraft, but I felt like I owed it to pink sheep to make a nice pen for her non-pink relatives and keep all of them safe. I made a tombstone for pink sheep and I said my respects. I brought the other sheep into my new sheep pen and they seemed pretty happy. They liked the little pool of water I'd made in the middle. On day 72 I wanted to bring Camel and my dogs back to my new base. It's kind of far but I didn't want to risk traveling through the nether with my dogs. Look at the Camel's ears, aww. We got home before dark and my dogs were pretty excited to have a new home. I added the one piece of pink wool that I'd shared from pink sheep to her memorial. And then I set up some hay bales in the sheep pen. They were happy and they kept climbing on them. I gave my dogs some treats and they made some baby dogs. On day 73 a wandering trader spawned at my desert base, but I didn't need anything that he was selling. I freed his llamas though and tamed them so that they wouldn't despawn. Then I went into the nether. I wanted to find a bastion to get a netherite upgrade template, but I needed some fire resistance potions first. And then on day 74 I went to search for a bastion. I spent a long time flying over lava, but I wasn't finding any bastions or even fortresses. But then finally I found a bastion. It wasn't a treasure bastion. I got rid of the piglin brutes in the tower by sniping them. Then I bridged over to and entered the bastion. The first chest had the template I needed and a piece of ancient debris. And the second chest had another ancient debris and a silk touch pickaxe. There was still one brood I'd missed, so I dealt with him. Third chest didn't have anything good, but the fourth chest had another template and a gold block. I decided to tunnel my way back to the portal so I could search for ancient debris on the way. Normally I use TNT, but I don't have enough gunpowder, and it's too late in the video to build a mob grinder. I dug down to Y level 17, and I turned on my chunk borders. And then I started digging along the border in the direction of my portal, avoiding lava as much as possible. I was also mining all the quartz I passed so I could repair the durability of my pickaxe. I got the hot tourist destination advancement while I was underground. It turned to day 76 and I was still underground searching for ancient debris. I got up to 17 pieces, which is 4 netherite ingots. I was surrounded by lava so I decided to go ahead and head home. On my way back I shot at a ghast and I got the return to sender advancement. I got back home and started melting my ancient debris, and then I duplicated some netherite templates. Then I turned my netherite scraps into ingots. I needed a better bow, so I used a couple enchants until I got one with power 4. I could combine this with my infinity bow and the power 4 book I have and that'll make a really good bow. I got back to my base on day 77, and then I added the netherite ingots to my armor. I got the cover me in debris advancement. I wanted to add armor trim to my armor before I wore it. I decided to use the bolt armor trim with copper accents. I think it looks pretty good. It would be cool if the copper oxidized in the armor over time like the blocks do. And then I ran around like a fool for a little while because I was excited about my armor. On day 78 there was more stuff around the house that I needed to do. I added a line of copper blocks to the rooftop instead of tough bricks. I think my house is starting to look pretty good honestly. I'm not usually into building that much, but I've put more time into building in this world and I really like the results. I made sure my sheep were doing okay and then I paid my respects to pink sheep. 
That night I built a balcony on my second floor so that I could shoot at mobs from up there. I forgot to record on day 79 and didn't notice until the night of day 80. I'd went to a nearby jungle and I tamed two of the jungle dogs from there. I also brought home two parrots. I put the parrots in Jeffrey's house and I think they get along. I'm not fully sure though. Sorry about missing a recording, I try hard not to do that, but it can happen. On day 88 I wanted to find some more dogs, so I went flying around looking for a new biome. I found a taiga and I flew around until I found an old growth taiga, and then I found some of the black taiga dogs. I really like how these look. Unfortunately we were pretty far from home, so it was going to be a long walk to get the dogs home, and I spent that night outside under the stars. I spent most of day 82 getting my dogs home. It was gross and rainy outside. A zombie tried to attack me, but my dogs handled it. We finally got home that evening and I got my dogs safely in the house. And since it was raining outside, I just went to sleep for the night. Day 83 I wanted to lay down like a path between my house and Jeffrey's in the sheep's pen. And then the rest of the day I just laid down dirt to level ground. On day 84 I went fishing so I could catch some puffer fish, because I wanted to make some water breathing potions. And then I fought a spider jockey that night. I made some water breathing potions and some night vision potions and then I went searching for some warm ocean ruins because I wanted to try to find a sniffer egg. I've never owned a sniffer in Minecraft and I really did want one. I was still searching on day 85. It's kind of hard to spot from an elytra because if you look down at the ocean you start flying in that direction. I finally spotted one. I wasn't really sure what to do at first, so I just started brushing all the sand blocks. But then I figured out which blocks to brush. I needed to find some different ruins, so I used a boat to make it easier than flying. I found a whole group of ruins, so I drank some more water breathing and I swam down. I finally found a sniffer egg. I started to drown and my inventory was full, but after a second I got everything worked out. I still had some potions left, so I wanted to see if I could find a second egg so my sniffer could have a friend when we got home. I spent most of the day doing archaeology, but I didn't find another egg, so I decided to head home. I got home that night and landed on my balcony. I'm glad I built it, but it looks kind of ugly. I'll need to improve it. I showed my sniffer egg to my dogs, they were pretty excited. On day 87 I set my sniffer egg on a moss block because I'd read that they hatch much faster that way. My camel was really interested. And then I remembered that camels and sniffers are naturally friends. I built a little walled in area because sniffers are notorious for wandering away. That night I decided to go find some mobs to fight and I got a skeleton to kill a creeper and I got far by C418. And then a little later I got one to drop Strad by C418. On day 88 I made a jukebox and I set it up in Jeffrey's house. Then I played far and danced with Blue Parrot for a little while. Then I tried out the Strad music disc. I'm not sure which one Blue Parrot liked more, but maybe he liked both of them. Jeffrey definitely seemed to like Strad better. Yellow Parrot just ignored us. Heard a weird noise so I went to check on my sniffer egg and it had hatched. Look how cute it is with his big nose. I set some moss down and gave Sniffer a tree. That night there was a zombie villager. I don't really need one, but I put him in a boat just in case. I went to check on Sniffer to see if they'd grown up yet, but they're still a baby. Then I flew over to the savannah because I wanted to bring some armadillos back to the base. One thing about armadillos is they're extremely slow to travel with. It took us all day to travel just a few hundred blocks. I finally got home with them and I thought I'd put them in the sheep pen. On day 90 I realized that sheep and armadillo do not get along. The sheep constantly torment them and make them ball up. I used my leftover brushes on the armadillos to get some scoots to make some dog armor. They're really scared of the sheep. I made some dog armor and I dyed it white and then I also dyed one of my dog's collars white. I think he looks handsome in his new armor. I put the dragon's head above my door. I think it looks good like that. I made some more dog armor and I dyed this one black and I put this one on one of my taiga dogs and I dyed his collar black also. Then I gave them some meat and they made a little baby black dog with a black collar. That night I made a pen for the armadillos because they're really scared of the sheep. I put some hoppers over a chest and I put some moss carpet over that so it would collect the scoots that they drop. I want to fill the whole area up with hoppers but I don't have enough iron for that yet. I gave my armadillo some spider eyes. 
and they made a little baby armadillo. It's so cute. My sniffer finally grew up. He's much bigger than I thought he'd be. He had a pitcher pod, so I planted that and got a seedy place and planning the past advancements. On day 91, a new version of the snapshot released, and now we're able to enchant the mace. I flew to my desert village so I could get some levels, and I sold and bought everything I could to get EXP. I tried the first enchant, and it was just fire aspect, but I went for it anyway. But it didn't have any extras, so I had to grindstone the mace. Then it said it would give me something called density 3. I didn't know what that was at the time, but it was new, so I wanted it. I needed some more levels, so I bought everything I could, even EXP bottles. But I didn't have enough for another enchant, so that night I killed some mobs. I got another music disc, but it's one that I already had. I enchanted the mace, and it had density and fire aspect. Apparently density makes it cause more damage from fall damage, so I wanted to test it out. So I pillared up, and the first time I failed miserably. Bruh. But then I tried again, and this time it worked, and I got the advancement for over overkill. I accidentally hit the button that switches your offhand, and for a second I thought that I'd pop my totem, but then I realized what happened. Over overkill is for doing 50 hearts of damage in a single hit. On day 92 I put on breaking and mending on my mace, then I rode my camel around for some reason. I don't really remember why. Look at his ears though, he's so cute. I brought both parrots to sit with each other, and I played them some music. Even Jeffrey was dancing. Hey Jeffrey. I wanted to see if bone meal worked on pitcher pods, and it does. They're interesting looking flowers. And then Sniffer dug up a torch flower seed, so I planted that also. On day 93, a wandering trader spawned at my base, but he didn't have anything I wanted to buy. I dyed one of my jungle dog's collars orange, and then I gave him some orange armor. Then I tamed the trader llamas so they wouldn't despawn. That night I fought mobs in the desert and I got a Malohi music disc. Day 94 I flew back home and I put some green dyed carpets on my llamas. This is one of my favorites, it has a creeper face on it. Then I played Malohi with Jeffrey and my parrots and I danced a little. On day 95 I gave my armadillos some spider eyes so they'd make another armadillo. Then I gave some more armor to my taiga dog. This one I gave white armor. It looks cool on the black dog I think. Then I bred my armadillos again because I want to get armor for all my dogs. I went down to the caves that night to get a few diamonds. On day 96 I didn't really do much but fly around on my elytra. I went out fighting mobs again that night because I needed gunpowder. Sniffer got me another torch flower seed on day 97 and I rode my llama around some more. I know you can't steer them but they're still fun to ride on, although my armadillos are pretty scared of llamas for some reason. I mean I understand why they're scared of sheep because sheep can be evil but not llamas. I put some support beams on my balcony and this made it look better and now it should be safer. I think it looks pretty good for the backside of a house. I got to watch Sniffer dig up a seed, it's really cute. Thanks buddy, aw. On day 98 I went to my first chest in my desert village because I wanted to get those fire charges I got from that first trial chamber. And then I used them to make a lot of different firework stars because I wanted to have a firework show on day 100 in celebration. I used up all my diamonds but I got a good bit of firework stars. I made fireworks with different flight durations and then I made some redstone repeaters and a comparator. Day 100 I set out some dispensers, and I made a simple clock out of the comparator, and then I added some repeaters so that I could set it off from far away. And here we are, the end of day 100. Let's set the fireworks off. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I really enjoyed making this video, even though it took a little longer than normal. Let me know if you want to see 200 days here. Subscribe!